Good morning, all of you. On behalf of NPTEL IIT Bombay, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to all the principals, SPOCs, mentors, professors, IIT Madras coordinators, my colleague, and all the representatives who have gathered here. We are very happy to have you here with us today, and thank you for accepting our invitation and making it here. In the last SPOC workshop, which was held on 5th July 2016, we had 800 plus local chapters, but in the last few years, these numbers have increased to 1400 plus. And now we can proudly say that we have 1400 local chapters all over the country. We are delighted and honored to have our NPTEL coordinators with us today. I request Nisha to welcome them on stage. Professor Shevgaukar, Principal Investigator, NPTEL IIT Bombay. <laughs> Professor Sridhar Iyer, Head Shadip and Co-PI NPTEL. <laughs> Professor Pratap Haridus, Coordinator IIT Madras. And Bharti Ma'am, Senior Project Officer NPTEL, IIT Madras. Hope you all have got the kits. Uh, kits. The TA form is available in the kits. I request you all to fill the form and submit it after the lunch. We'll now be starting today's sessions. Now I'll request Professor Sridhar Iyer, Hat Sidip, and Kopi INPTL to say a few words. Thank you. Uh, just to give you a brief background, uh, CDIP is the Center for Distance Engineering Education at IIT Bombay. And it's the body through which we carry out a lot of outreach programs and content creation and so on. Professor Shevgonkar actually was the first head of this uh, center, so I don't really have to say more. And he's also the principal in investigator of the NPTEL project at IIT Bombay since its inception. So with that, I'll hand over to him and uh, we'll go ahead. Good morning, friends. First of all, a very warm welcome to IIT Bombay in this uh, SPOC workshop, which we conduct regularly. Not only IIT Bombay, but all IITs actually conduct these workshops in different zones. And in IIT Bombay, we conduct in the Western Zone. So as mentioned, last workshop was held almost uh, one and a half year back. And uh, we are again here. And first of all, I should thank you because the response was really overwhelming. We got registration of something like 170 plus. And after some time, we have to put some restrictions, you know, of having an accompanying person along with the SPOC convener and so on. So our apology for uh, restricting the entry on, for the workshop but really good to see all of you here. Uh, Dr. Pratap and I think Bharti, they will tell you more details about the current state of what is happening in the NPTEL. But what I'm going to do is to give you a little more perspective of how NPTEL came. Many of you might be knowing it, but some of you might be new. Uh, they may not know the history. And it's always good to know uh, how, how much we have come, you know, when we started, how we started, and how much we have come. It's a long way we have traveled in NPTEL program. The NPTEL program actually started, uh, it was under discussion from 98, 99, but finally it got approved in 2001 by MHRD. And uh, that time, essentially, five IITs uh, and IISC were involved. And the objective of the program, uh, it had a very novel cause in some sense that uh, the need was felt that there are many institutions which are coming in the country, the engineering institutions. And uh, there is acute shortage of the, the faculty in these colleges. However, the entry of the students was always very good because 90 plus in the 12th standard, they get entry into engineering programs. But when they come into the programs, there are not enough teachers in these colleges. So MHRD, along with uh, uh, IITs, they wanted to create the content, at least that could be available to these bright students who are coming to these colleges. And Professor Anand, who was the director of IIT Madras that time, he was the lead, uh, he was the chairman of this, uh, this program. And then there was a representative from each IITs. Uh, we could call them COPI if you want to have, or the IIT representatives. So it was a highly coordinated program. We started in around 2001. And today I must say very proudly that probably this is the one single program in this country which is so coordinated among all IITs and very institutions and is so successful. You know, there are many programs. <laughs> So there are many programs which came, you know, which work into two institutions, three institutions. But here now we are talking about, you know, all IITs together, all NITs, ISC, all colleges which are participating into that. 
So uh, we are really proud that this has really come a very, very long way. So initially in the, what they call is the phase one, uh, the objective was at least cover the prime disciplines of engineering. And that time five disciplines were there, mechanical, civil, electrical, electronics, communication, and computer science. And they, we were asked to develop courses. And that time it was not very clear that if you wanted to make this thing very interactive, uh, would the video lectures be the only one which would be the good, good way? Some people thought that time, maybe web courses will be much more interactive and so on and so on. So in the first phase, uh, by about 2005, about 120 video courses were uh, recorded, like classroom uh, lectures, and almost 120 web courses were, were recorded. And they were put onto the NPTEL website. But when the feedback came from people, the people still wanted to see the normally the way lectures are conducted in the classrooms. So the web courses were there, people were using it. But when you got the feedback from people, they always thought, no, I think seeing a lecturer in the class mode is still probably a better option. So when the second phase of NPTEL came, that time then the web portion was said, well, we will not focus on the web portion. We will essentially create the video courses. And then second phase, then there was a very massive uh, sort of meeting which took place uh, in, in Chennai. So there are almost like 200 faculty came, you know, and and all the principal investigators were there. And that time, even those disciplines which were not covered in the first phase, they were taken into consideration. Even the postgraduate courses which were not there in the first phase, they were, they were taken into consideration. And NPTEL committed 1,000 courses to be developed, mostly in the video format. And I must say again that by 2008-2009, not 1,000, but at least 900 plus courses were done. You know, so it's a very, very large number. And why I say that this is a great achievement for, for our country is that during that time, many of us used to visit even European countries or, 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 or US, and people used to talk about MOOCs, you know, that we are doing MOOCs. So I, I happened to be in Netherlands, and people were boasting, you know, that we are doing MOOCs, you know, and so I asked them, how many courses uh, you do in MOOCs? So he said, five. So he said, he asked me, how much courses you do? I said, 500. <laughs> so he couldn't believe it that we are doing 500 courses, you know, which are online, and still, we don't know, I mean, don't talk too much about it in the external world. So the OCW, uh, which started from MIT and the NPTEL, actually they all started almost at the same time. And the courses, but the, but the objective was the OCW and NPTEL was very different. The OCW objective was that that's the way we do, do in MIT. These are the courses which are available. You want it, you take it. If you don't want it, you don't take it. So you take it or leave it. NPTEL objective was very different. NPTEL objective was that can we really take a quality education into those places where the teachers are not available? So the mandate which was given to NPTEL was very, very different than OCW. And that's the reason initially, though the courses which we developed, they were par excellence, even in the international scenario, most of the users, they were from, from India. Because the college students essentially. And then when we did the survey, we also found something interesting. It is not the students who are undergoing these courses much more actively. But the faculty are going this, through these courses much more actively. So many of them want to teach the course first time, and they don't know how to go about it. So they just went through this course, and then they started teaching it. Even within IIT, we found something interesting. There are many of us who did not do some course during our undergraduate or postgraduate program, but we were curious to know about it. We just went through some other professor's lectures through that. You know. I myself have done that. For example, Professor Balakrishnan from, uh, from IIT Madras, his quantum mechanics course, I've I, I gone through it. Because I never studied quantum mechanics myself, you know, in that sense. So even within IIT also, people started seeing the benefit of this. That, well, you can really enrich your knowledge. You can learn some subject which yourself have not gone through, and so on and so on. Later on, when the sort of surveys were conducted and when the scope expanded and people came to know about this, the foreign students started using it. So we get feedback from even the international community, the student from very well-established university in the United States that I went through this course. And this is a course, amazing course, which I have gone through. They even give the comments, tell our professor how to teach courses. <laughs> you know? So this was something very pr proud thing. The Indian teachers are always well known. You know? They always teach very well. But even that compliment coming from the Western world that, look, these teachers are doing better job than even in the well-known university in the US. I think that was a very great, great recognition there. However, in US, when you do this kind of activity, there is nothing free in US. You know, nothing free in the, in the Western world. The NPTEL is completely free. So many times when people went through these courses and they were very, very you know, excited about it, 
they got benefited by that. Many times they wrote to us, well, I did this course, how do I pay about it? And we said very, you know, humbly that you can't pay about it because you have no mechanism to collect money. Where well, MHRD already, already said that you can only make these courses, but these courses cannot be used for commercial activities. So initially money was made available to you and this content, whatever you are creating, you have to uh, deliver free to anybody who is, who is there in the country. Of course, in today's world, nothing can remain confined to the country. So it went outside the country and people started using it. So it is not only the, though the objective was primarily meant for Indian colleges, essentially the, the spread is now worldwide. And there are many developing and developed countries also, actually you are using this, uh, these courses, uh, you know, worldwide. So that is something which is very, very, very satisfactory. When this, after 2011, when this course as well become matured and people started using it, when we did the survey and we started talking to even the, the, the colleges and principals and, and, and various stakeholders, every time we took the feedback from the students and the, always the feedback used to come there, they are great courses. But how does it help us in our examination system? Because our examination system is very different. The question, the way they are asked are very different. So these courses are very good if you are very curious to know about something on your own. But as far as your grades are concerned in the examination, these courses really don't, don't really matter much. Right? And with that then, very, very cautious decision was taken by the Ministry of Human Resource Development and NPTEL that we will start a certification program. It also started with uh, the, the well-known quote which came from uh, uh, the, the IT industry that only 20% people are employable in this country. You know? So NPTEL actually went to these people, NASCOM, and said, what do you think we should teach so that they become employable? And you will be surprised. They came only with three things, that if you teach these three things, algorithm, data structure, and programming, the people will become employable. So NPTEL actually created this course, and NASCOM and NPTEL together endorsed the certificates that this is the course which is endorsed by NASCOM. It is covering the content which is required by the industry. So that certificates probably can be taken to the industry and it may, it may become more employable. That was the beginning of a certification program uh, in the NPTEL. Later on, when that, uh, the computer science on the IT courses you know, became available, the need came more from every sector. And why it came from every sector? That by the time even the regulatory authorities have started realizing that there is no choice if you wanted to have really a credit-based system or a flexible system in the universities to give an option for the online education. People were using some courses coming from uh, some MIT or edX and, and so on, but a very solid, consolidated effort was required so that anybody from the university wants to take the course and claim credits for it. That structure should be available. With that then, the courses, other disciplines also courses started ha happening. And today, the fifth phase of, or fourth phase of NPTEL, what we call, it is the NPTEL MOOCs now. So originally the idea was create the content, leave the content on the website, anybody wants to use it, let them use it and so on. But in present phase, that's not the objective. The objective is create the content, but also create a structure in which you can conduct a course, you can give assignments, you can conduct examination, and at the end you are going to give a certificate to everybody with a proper marks and grades. So that any institution or university wants to use those credits in their credit system, the structure is available for them. With that thing in place now, now the AICT, which is the prime body which is deciding the rules and regulations for engineering program, after Professor Anil Sahasrabuddha went to AICT, now they are saying that you can make even 15% courses mandatory in your program, taken through the, through, the, through the online courses here. The curriculum which was designed very recently, there was a national committee for every discipline, the courses were there. The focus actually was put as NPTEL. So they said when you are designing a curriculum, can you put NPTEL as a focus so that anybody wants to implement their curriculum in their institution, at least the content is readily available to them, right? Something like that. So now AICT is on board, right? We say that this material can be used for credit purposes. The, the, the University Grants Commission also accepts that these courses can be used, you know, into, into your curriculum. So I think now this NPTEL MOOCs program really is getting integrated into the university system. Still, the credits which we are giving, maybe university may not honor those credits directly, but you will see later on that we give you on marks. 
the university can decide their own criteria for deciding marks, you know, what is the corresponding grade, and so on and so on. But at least the elective level courses, which many of the institutions may not have expertise uh, with, they can really use these courses which are coming from NPTEL and integrate those courses into, you, into your program. So the truly the credit-based structure with the Washington Accord uh, sort of endorses, that can be taken to the colleges without really having their own resources because these, these resources are going to be available to them right into that. So that's where the structure today is. So today the NPTEL program is a complete program starting from the lectures to the assignments to the evaluation to the, to the certification. And once that happens, actually the scale is increasing now. And this is a nationwide uh, sort of examination which you have to conduct. So Tata's came and they started actually having the proctored examination, so online examination which are conducted there. So now every semester we, we run courses and you know, which, are, which are having schedule and examination schedule and so on and so on. But now if you imagine that all discipline, if they start offering the courses in this mode, this is going to be much more than GATE or even, even JE. And incidentally, we don't have that infrastructure. Because when you say GATE, GATE is really a national examination, everybody gets involved into it. And PTEL is still not reached to that level there. So we are very staff crunched. We have very skeleton staff at IIT Bombay, IIT Madras, and all other IITs also. And with that skeleton staff, we are trying to actually do our best and try to conduct this examination on time and so on and so on. But this scale is increasing and the system is becoming much more complex. The media is playing a very great role now, positive, negative, both. Because if you do something good, you get a feedback immediately. If you do something bad, you get also the bad also very, very quickly that this job was not done properly, the examination was not conducted on time, the computer was down, server was down, all kinds of comments keep coming. Nevertheless, we are quite happy with that in the sense that yes, that means people are using it, they are participating into the program, and we are moving into the right direction. The hurdles are there, which we which will definitely solve. So Bharti, she is from uh, IIT Madras. I think she is going to tell you much more detail what difficulty she faces when he conducts the examination every semester, right, and so on. So with us, we are having now uh, uh, Pratap. Uh, he is from IIT Madras and uh, Bharti from IIT Madras. So now since it is an examination conducting body, the central source actually is from IIT Madras. They are the one who coordinate because it has to be extremely coordinated activity where the timelines are there, fixed dates are there and so on. And all other IITs actually provide the supports uh, in the online format, conducting examination, putting the web uh, on web portal and so on and so on. But IIT Madras is the one which is the most coordinating. Uh, uh, Andrew, uh, Professor Andrew, he is in the other conference, well, he will join a little later. So you will be able to visit him uh, also in this conference. So these are the people, right, you, you, you are uh, uh, interacting with. And if you have any questions or doubt regarding conduct of this, you know, NPTEL, right, feel free to ask the question. If you want to make any suggestion, feel free to do that. Because ultimately our objective is that this program is your program. It should go to you and you are the one who should use it as much as possible. We will be the one which are facilitator, right? But ultimately, you are the one, your participation will be extremely important. So before I close, I just want to introduce the team from IIT Bombay, right, who are there. And uh, very small team, uh, she is Ria. Uh, then you are having Bharti, Bharti Sakpal. Then you have Nisha, then you have Bharti Sarang. Uh, these people work essentially on the coordination on the web for conducting examinations and so on and so on. Then you are having on camera, you are having Ravi, you are having uh, Vijay. And uh, who else? Uh, Amin is there and Tushar. These are the video editor, editing persons. These people are actually working on this project for almost last 10 plus years. So they know in and out of it. Right? They know what is required, how to, how to create a proper video quality and so on. Uh, and we, should, we are really again very happy that our video quality lectures are really very, very good. Whatever deterioration you see, that deterioration is not because of the technical manpower. The deterioration is because of MPEG-4. So you should blame MPEG-4 for, for any deterioration and don't blame the people that the video quality was not good. Our video quality is always recorded into HD format, right? And you know, we try to do the thing which is really very, very best, right? So these are, the, these are the people who are there and they are going to be here the whole day. So you can also have any questions or doubts, you can ask them. So I wish you very best, right? And have a good time here. Right, and make this program as much successful and integrated in your system as possible. My, my best wishes to you. Thank you. Okay, before I close, one more, one more thing, one more announcement. This is probably my last meeting for NPTEL. Well, I'm retiring next week. 
so so i am i will not be now the part of infitel right so baby sridhar iyer is there of course but i'll tell you later <laughs> so sridhar iyer is there he's copy yeah, so he's he's definitely going to be there so you will see the activity nothing is going to get changed except one person will be less that's all thank you very much thank you sir uh, thank you for giving us the brief about the nptel the historical background of the nptel uh now i think all of you have a good knowledge about the nptel so with this i would like to call upon the stage professor pratap haridosh coordinator nptel itm for giving the presentation on noc whatever we have done in the last few years so good morning uh, uh first of all i thank all of you for coming here and i thank professor shiv gonkar Uh, who has really, you know, uh, participated in a very major way in this whole uh, initiative. Uh, in fact, we were completely unaware of what he was just announcing till till you heard it as well. Um, so, first of all, I would like to also, uh, you know, thank you and congratulate you as well as your students uh, for uh, for many things for participating in this process in such a uh, you know uh, involved manner uh, in an interested manner, and for to all your students who have worked so hard you, and all of you who have worked so hard uh, that they have all done well. Uh, after all this is a felicitation uh, uh, activity that we are doing here so all of your uh, colleges uh, your local chapters and your students have uh, really worked hard and done very well uh, so we are so proud and so happy that you know we have this occasion to meet you all and uh, you know share this uh, whole process with you so thank you and i would like to give you all a hand so uh, we we have just i think a couple of presentations uh, uh, we in fact we have done many workshops and so on, shown a lot of uh, data at various workshops this is slightly different uh, this focuses on uh, primarily what has happened uh, during the course runs specifically uh, and what has been accomplished in the course runs we would like to share that data with you so that uh, you understand the scale of the operation um, uh, what is uh, being attempted what is being tried out and how far we have come with it and we definitely have a lot of ideas we definitely have a lot of uh, you know distance to go uh, we have some ideas on uh, how we should go about it and we'll share all that with you okay so you you are aware of what you see here that it is a, i mean it's a project of mhrd uh, we have had association with nascom and uh, of course uh, uh, at least our portal is uh, significantly i mean it is basically powered by google with a lot of support from google engineers uh, and so far actually they have done it even for free so in fact that's been a very uh, uh, important uh, aspect of uh, you know the activity that has helped us uh, scale to the extent that we have scaled so far so uh, So, yeah this is just the outline of what we are trying to do here uh, i'll make this presentation on uh, uh, what we have done with respect to the course runs uh, bharti will uh, step in and do something about uh, the local chapter initiative and what we have done and then we will we also have a small video we'll show you in the middle which i don't think we have uh, shown you before so in in with respect to even this presentation i'll talk about these uh, 15 exam runs that we have done some uh, some overview of what what has been done something with respect to local chapters workshops uh the uh, most recent uh, semester that got uh, completed july to november 2017 and then we'll get on to this uh, rating of uh, local chapters <coughs> so this you may have seen before this is just summarizes what we have uh, done uh, in nptel uh, uh, there are in fact uh, about 1400 plus courses which are present uh, in the repository uh, in the form of a library uh, more than 37000 hours of video uh, has been uh, high quality video Uh, with a lot of faculty putting in many hard, uh, hours of hard work to get this uh, generated uh, and we are very proud to see that you know it's been used actually by nearly 700 million people around the world that's a very significant amount of the population of the world that has used this uh, content we are so how proud and happy about it and uh, uh, we also have you know may, much of it has been converted into subtitles and so on and so a lot of processing of this content has been done it is not simply a one time activity that something was put up and forgotten a uh, considerable effort has been made to first make the content in uh, you know technically good quality good uh, you know educational content uh, and also make it you know with good video quality as was being mentioned uh, and also further process it so that it is uh, has greater utility so this is the kind of you know infrastructure across all iits to enable uh, doing this uh, all created as part of the project we have uh, uh, professional quality uh, uh, studios in each of the iits to ensure that this recording is done Uh, in you know professional manner uh, and uh, made available so that it stays for a long time because a lot of effort goes into it uh, with respect to the online uh, course process uh, which has been on only since 2014 there also significant strides have been made uh, professor shivgangkar was just mentioning that you know many uh, countries uh, around the world think that they have put in a lot of uh, activity in this area and when you actually ask them for details they talk of numbers like 1 2 3 4 5 that's it 
So when they, uh, so when we talk of a number saying that we have completed 514 courses, that is huge. Very few places, uh, in fact there is no other place that I am aware of that has gone this far. Uh, no other university has uh, gone this far. Uh, even recently, uh, I, as because I am part of NPTEL, uh, I have been involved in one uh, Indo-European project where they are trying to uh, look at ways of uh, you know, enabling more digital education in India uh, and so to speak. And they are completely stunned by the numbers that we have. They have not seen such numbers. They are all talking of one course, two course. So they have actually ideas when they are now realizing that they can probably learn more from us than the other way around on uh, this uh, aspect. So 514 courses completed. Uh, more than 2.7 million people uh, enrolled for these courses, uh, which is a huge number. Uh, more than you know, 101.82 uh, lakh uh, people registered for the exams. And uh, you know, fair, about 80% of these uh, have received uh, certificates. Um, this is our portal, uh, many of you are, I mean in fact definitely all of you are quite aware of uh, our exam centers uh, where we run these exams, that's our certificate and uh, now our courses are also available on Swayam. So NPTEL is an integral part of Swayam, so that's again something that many people who are you know, first encountering these uh, names often have this doubt what is NPTEL, what is Swayam. We are an integral part of Swayam, Swayam is a larger uh, umbrella kind of uh, uh, activity uh, under which various other uh, agencies are also involved. Uh, the core, uh, I mean, for engineering and you know, post uh, undergraduate, postgraduate engineering uh, kind of curriculum, the primary uh, uh, you know agency that looks after it is uh, NPTEL, and uh, so we are called a national MOOCs coordinator for uh, as part of Swayam. So we show up under Swayam, and uh, uh, in fact, even under Swayam, since we have we have invested a lot of time and effort doing all this, much of uh, what we have learned through this process is what is being you know integrated into the Swayam process. So many of the other uh, national MOOCs coordinators are learning from these processes and trying to incorporate uh, specific aspects that are relevant to them. So that's how this uh, whole Swayam activity is uh, building. Okay, so the vision has always been to provide high quality affordable education at uh, large scale. Uh, and in that context, uh, we've been developing video lectures, uh, offering uh, online courses and conducting uh, exams. And we have been uh, actively involved in trying to promote the use uh, and ad adoption by colleges and universities. So these are all part of our mission and we have really uh, worked hard uh, uh, over the last few years to keep, you know, building on these uh, two. So now, when we get into the details, this is how it uh, looks. Uh, if you can see here, uh, July uh, 2014, we started with one course, which is what shows up here. And then, uh, ever since, we have been, uh, you know, uh, progressively increasing the number of courses. Uh, at least when we started, we didn't anticipate or uh, we weren't sure how far this would go or what we would uh, end up doing in the process. Uh, but the numbers have really gone up in a huge way. So this actually shows up as September 2017 and October 2017 because two different durations of courses had, uh, I mean our exams were distributed across those two dates. And so actually we had 159 courses in the uh, immediate preceding run that uh, it was there towards the you know, second half of 2017. And now for April 2018, uh, where the courses are just going to start now in another you know, two weeks time courses are going to start. We have 226 courses. So we've been seeing a steady increase in the number of courses uh, as we go forward uh, in terms of availability of uh, content. Uh, and so this is actually, when we say 226 courses, those are 226 courses where everything is available. You have content, you have uh, assignments, uh, you know, every week there's an assignment, there's, a, there's going to be a discussion forum, there's 226 places where the students can ask questions uh, and have faculty from IITs and IAC answer them. Uh, and of course, final exams. So all of that is, uh, so there's a, uh, I mean, this number has many things, hit, many layers in, uh, hidden inside it, uh, which are not immediately evident. So the, the enrollment for these courses is open. Uh, so in fact, uh, uh, that's one of the things that we would like to share with you and highlight. Uh, I'm sure many of you are already aware because you are quite involved in this process. But uh, please spread the word and uh, so that more people can you know, benefit from what is being uh, provided here. We have already completed 15 exam runs, which is what you see here, 15 different exam runs we have completed. And in that process, we have completed 514 uh, courses. Numbers have also, in terms of student participation, number has been steadily climbing. Uh, in our most recent uh, run, we had uh, more than a million students enrolled, uh, which is very significant. And about 70,000 of them uh, completed the course and uh, received certificates. Uh, and as you are all completely aware, uh, you know, these are the main things that we have. We have content, uh, discussion forum. Uh, assignments which could be objective or subjective based on the kind of course uh, it is, uh, text transcripts including some lab demos, etc. And there's the interactive session in some courses based on uh, what the course is and you know availability of faculty, etc. Yes, so uh, one important thing that has uh, often, uh, now that you know increasingly there's interest in uh, doing credit transfer, 
uh, there is interest in you know uh, getting students to formally take it as part of their curriculum and so on. A uh, lot of questions have been asked about what is the extent of uh, student participation in this process, how should we gauge it. So uh, this is I think this slide sort of captures some key highlights with respect to it and I will also add this comment that the way we are doing this is uh, we are doing this in a very cooperative manner with all of you, with all the institutes and colleges that are uh, participating in this process. So we provide you all raw data including this information and uh, it is up to you to decide your uh, university's mode of studies to decide how you want to uh, you know, value it. So that is completely your uh, you know, domain, it is not our domain. So, so whatever we say in terms of credits for the course is our uh, you know, estimate of what should be the credit for the course, our guideline for what, what the number of credits should be for the course. You can select to do something different, that is totally your choice. So your university can select to do it differently, the neighboring university can select to do it differently. Because you have some standards within your university of how the course is run, what is expected of a course, etc. That may have some variation. So we provide you the raw data in all cases. We only provide our, our guidelines and raw data is given to you completely, you select what you want to do. So for example, in a typical course, you are looking at uh, 3 to 4 hours of video lectures per week. Okay, so, so if we talk in terms of classes, uh, we would uh, three, hour, 3 hours of uh, lecture, we would often call it as a 3 credit course, 4 hours of lecture we would call as 4 credit course, that is the tendency. But many places we also have tutorial classes and so then uh, you would say 3 hours of lecture and 1 hour of tutorial. So that is still a four credit course, so things like that. We have uh, variations like that and we recognize that in different ways in our universities. So lecture hours itself would be three to four in many of our courses. Then you would have uh, weekly assignments where basically the student depending on the assignment, complexity of the assignment may end up having to spend about two hours on our assignments. So if you have some uh, specific value that you put for the tutorial part of uh, uh, you know the uh, credit process, you can, you can keep in mind that there is going to be about two hours of engagement in that context. So you can decide how you want to value it. That's the reason why we say we only provide you a guideline. We can always, you know, simply go by this three hours, three credit, four hours, four credit and complete it. But that's not the idea here. So that is the reason why we want to highlight these things. So there's about two hours of uh, per week of that kind of activity that is there. Um, we have text transcripts, we have references, some live interaction, possibly about an hour of week is that uh, activity is there. And then we have a discussion forum. So based on how involved the student is, they may spend even an hour on the discussion forum based on, because some, some of the courses have very uh, interactive discussion forum uh, on and so a lot of questions are asked, people answer and there is a lot of learning that is going on in it because you have doubt, somebody else also has a doubt and then you understand maybe you had a doubt and you didn't even know how to say it, you find somebody else saying it the correct way. So a lot of such activity is there. So if you look at this, you are looking at you know say 3 to 4 hours plus 2 plus 2, so you are looking at anywhere from 7 to 8 hours of uh, involvement for a serious student. So, uh, so you have to decide what you want to do in terms of credits for, uh, for that uh, and decide how you want to do it. Of course, there will be students who do not use most of it, but that is not, uh, I mean we always gauge it with respect to the serious student and then uh, from there you, you know, scale it down, scale it accordingly. So what have we done? So this number here says 740, this is actually the 514 that were completed and the 226 that are opening right now. So that is what we have. You can see here across almost all major engineering disciplines courses are available. Uh, only a few places where it is, I mean the discipline is you know not commonly available across many institutes, you have lesser number of courses. Uh, but you can see otherwise all major disciplines are accounted for here. Computer science and engineering seems to be more popular, so you have about 104 courses there. But you can see here chemical engineering 36, uh, civil engineering 46, humanities, large fraction of humanity courses are there 92, electrical engineering 89, mechanical engineering 95. Uh, metallurgy is 39, so significant number of courses, management courses also, many students uh, would like to, I mean these, uh, this day and age where lot of students are you know getting into entrepreneurship, uh, trying to open businesses uh, or trying to get into some management role somewhere, they want to do management uh, courses and many of our institutes, our curriculum is so rigid and we do not have time and space to allow them to do their curriculum as well as do some management courses. You get them in, you get them out in 4 years with some specific set of courses, so they can do, management courses they can do here, so that is very nice. Uh, same thing, so you can see across all institutes, you can see wide range of uh, all the IITs and IAC have been involved in putting these courses together. And we have also other institutes which are institutes of national importance who are specialized in specific areas who have also contributed to courses. So that is how you get this 740. Of course distribution is not necessarily exactly uniform for various reasons, but it is generally picking up. It is picking up to the point that you will see all major institutes offering a significant number of courses uh, as we go by. 
Uh, if you look at the distribution of courses, uh, the original, you know, f the 514 that were completed, you can see here uh, the larger fraction was an eight week course, which is the sort of the mid range uh, in terms of duration. And then you have about half the courses were like that, and then you have uh, the rest of them were, you know, 12 weeks and uh, four week kind of courses. Four week co courses have typically been specialized elective courses, where it doesn't make sense to have, have a semester long course. It's a very specialized topic. You have just uh, 10 to 12 lectures on that particular topic. Uh, coming to what we are having in, uh, in the upcoming semester, you find actually a much larger fraction uh, is the 12 week course. It's actually go growing in size. This is in, uh, indicative of the fact that you know a lot of uh, people are actually interested in this. Many faculty are even interested in these kinds of courses. Uh, and uh, in fact, there's even interest in creating faculty development programs based on it, which I'll comment on a little in, in a little bit. There's interest in doing that, and uh, that is where these uh, 12 week courses are uh, g uh, gaining in number. Uh, and so you'll see that uh, you see that uh, tendency. It's largely based on what people are interested in, and also what our faculty are interested in providing. Also, in terms of uh, type of course, uh, we have new courses. You can see uh, even in the uh, even in the 514 that were completed, a very large fraction, almost three quarter of them were new. Um, 100 were reruns and repurposed were 46. Repurposed would mean they were courses which were there in the original NPTEL repository, and then they were taken up, and then you know further modification was done to make it a MOOC course, and then uh, provided as a MOOC course. You can see that uh, you know as time progresses, uh, the uh, manner in which these courses are becoming available and the form in which they are you know becoming more prevalent uh, is evolving. So you see here now the uh, number of repurposed. Most of the repurposing seems to have been done, so it seems less are uh, less new courses. I mean less courses are being repurposed. A significant fraction, almost half, is now a rerun. So that is actually good news in many ways. It means that those are courses that a lot of students are valuing. And not just that, it also means that these are courses that you can sort of predictively uh, expect that will be available. So when, when many times when you're doing this credit transfer kind of activity, you would like to tell the student, okay, you can take these courses this semester, you can take the, as you guide the student, you can say that, you know, take these courses this semester, take the other course the other semester, etc. We are also trying to do that. We would like to actually, I will show you in one of our slides about what we are trying to do in the future. That's exactly what we would like to do. We would like to give you a very, you know, predictable uh, flow of courses, at least for a major chunk. We'll always have a lot of new stuff because that's what is very nice and exciting about the whole field of education. So we're never going to stop that. But we'll still give you one core section which will be predictably available semester after semester. So we are sort of headed in that direction. You can see almost half the courses are now reruns. So that's uh, where we are headed. So these are the numbers. Uh, you can see these large bars are typically the number of students who enroll. Uh, we've always maintained that the whole uh, idea of this open online education is to make it really barrier free. There should be no barriers. If any student wants to take something, they want to experiment uh, in their learning process, try some new area of uh, uh, study, we should not put any barriers. So that is why the whole process is uh, essentially free. As much as possible of the process is kept free and definitely enrollment is free. So large number of students enroll to various courses and uh, typically less than 10% of them actually uh, go ahead and complete the course in terms of you know, finishing the final examination, appearing for the final examination and finishing the final, final exam. So we don't see that as a negative aspect at all. We actually are very happy that there are so many people trying out various things, exploring new avenues, et cetera. And when, when they find from, you know, they enroll for like half a dozen courses, they find like there are two or three in the right level that they are comfortable and they think it is the way they want to go. They continue more seriously with respect to those courses and complete those courses. So you can see here, you know, about uh, in the most recent run, uh, July to you know, December kind of run, which are, which are these two bars that you see here. Uh, so around 6.5% uh, of people completed those courses, but that is with respect to a very large number of enrollments. So this is still about 70,000 students who completed this. Uh, I would also like to take this moment to recognize you know, th what these numbers mean. I say a number like 70,000. So uh, I mean, it, it is, uh, it's a number that we would like to reflect on in many ways. So uh, one uh, thing that I, I, I feel is interesting to note that you know, this is all a part of an outreach process. It's a part of an outreach process we are trying to make something that was not possible many years ago, which is to make uh, as much of our uh, Indian public access the IIT system and IAC system uh, in, in a free manner. And therefore, you know, only their quality of their effort, their you know, involvement in the process is all that will decide whether they get the education or not, whether they get a certificate from us or not, uh, rather than just an entrance exam, which makes it very, which, which could be difficult for various other reasons. They, they may not have an opportunity to pre prepare for the entrance exam, et cetera. So if you just look at it, when you say 70,000 cleared the, uh, you know, uh, got certificate from IITs in this last uh, semester, that if you just take the main IITs, you know, there are all the seven IITs and IAC that are involved, 
if you take the entire student strength, not just the graduating students, the entire student strength of the seven IITs and IAC, that's of that order. It's, uh, it's about 10,000 students per campus. So you're looking at you know, uh, almost an equal number of people from outside in the public are able to access the system as of today. So that's a very nice uh, statistic to uh, be aware of. This is a quick look at the exam attendance. Attendance has been pretty good with respect to this is attendance with respect to the number of people who, who wanted to write the examination, who registered for the examination. Uh, this may not seem like much initially because after all they did register for the exam, but if you compare it against other examinations, I mean many, many of the other examinations which are there, which are running on a you know, regular basis in, uh, nationally, this, these are good percentages to have. I mean they are you know, around 90% is what you see as uh, attendance. And from those who registered for the exam, again around 90% are, uh, or who appeared for the exam, about 90% are clearing the examination. So pretty good statistics that way. That this means that by the time they reach the final examination uh, stage, uh, they have gained enough confidence. Uh, when they register for the examination, they have actually learned enough and gained enough confidence that there's a pretty good chance that they will actually complete successfully. So that is the point of this uh, statistic. Um, in this context, in uh, August 2016, both UGC and AICT have, uh, uh, I mean, released gazette notifications, and I'm sure uh, you're all familiar with this. Uh, basic highlight being that uh, they are now uh, allowing 20% of uh, the total credit uh, to be given through online courses uh, through the Swayam platform. And as I said uh, earlier, we are an integral part of the Swayam platform. Every course that we have is on Swayam. Uh, so we only do, I mean, certain uh, uh, features are not yet available on Swayam. So therefore, for certain activities, you have to still come to the NPTEL portal to complete the process. Uh, but basically, we are on Swayam. We have all our courses on Swayam. And as you can see, this is exactly the thinking that all of us have had, all of you also I'm sure have had this kind of thinking. It enables us to actually offer courses, uh, or, or uh, enables our students to access courses, which otherwise they may not have an opportunity to access, because every course will not be available in every institute. Uh, for your information, uh, IIT Madras also does uh, credit transfer through the NPTEL process. Our own students, IIT Madras students, can take courses on NPTEL and they will get credit in their uh, grade card based on those uh, courses. Again, primarily this, they can take now, they are now not, no longer restricted to taking a course only from IIT Madras. They can take an IIT Kanpur course, IIT Karakpur course. They can take a course in computer science or management or electrical engineering, which they may not otherwise be able to take. So a lot of such things are now possible and uh, this is what is being done. So reason for taking MOOCs, uh, courses th through uh, NPTEL. So uh, a major reason and for which uh, we have to really thank you, thank all of you, is this 35% uh, that you see here that uh, college faculty actually encouraged uh, the student to participate in this process. So I think uh, your show, uh, I mean all of us in the uh, you know, teaching uh, fraternity uh, should feel very happy that we are encouraging our students to take good content wherever it is available uh, and uh, this is a large uh, part of this is uh, thanks to you. So I would like to take uh, the opportunity to give you a hand for this. It's really a big ac accomplishment for us uh, because uh, ultimately we think this is a cooperative process. We are all benefiting from it. Uh, we are all assisting each other in this process. Uh, and uh, involvement of this nature really shows that uh, it is being accepted in that format. 30% do say that they are looking for to explore new domains. Again, something we are happy about because that's the whole idea. It is open and online for that particular purpose. We have still a fair fraction who use it for gate preparation, etc. And then you have other uh, reasons. Campus recruitment, again, something that is uh, very valuable. Um, again, here, this is one place where we are trying to actually uh, put in some effort by working with industries. Just the way we have worked so hard with local chapters and colleges, we are now in, a, in the process of setting up a similar uh, activity with respect to industries. They would also become associates of this NPTEL process in, in different ways. And uh, the primary, uh, some of the driving, uh, I mean, some of the uh, uh, aspects that we would like them to focus on is, uh, you know, co-offering courses with us so that uh, the, uh, you know, students who take the course will not only know the fundamentals from, a, you know, academic perspective, We'll also know the current industry uh, application of that particular course. So we are trying to enc uh, encourage them and invite them to co-offer courses with us, to look at ways of offering internships to students who are doing well uh, in these courses, so that you know, even from small towns far away, who they may not have access to such uh, companies in their placement process, etc. But they've done well in the course, and that's really all the industry wants. Many times the industry feels frustrated that they pick up students from various colleges that they feel are not re not yet ready for that particular job that they are trying to give them. So they end up having to train them. But now through this process, they can, they can pick students who are actually good in that particular course that they are interested in. And then those students, they can offer internships. And of course, eventually, hopefully, this will translate to directly into placement. So this is something that we're working with them. 
exam registration statistics uh, again from the uh, perspective of uh, gender uh, you know bias or uh, lack of bias so to speak we are happy to see that you know this is approaching 50 percent uh, participation between uh, both girls and boys uh, this is actually a significant accomplishment because particularly in higher education as you go away from school uh, there's a I mean big disincentive, uh, disincentive for uh, women to continue a lot of personal reasons uh, for which they end up being held back and it is nice that this open online process is actually allowing them to participate much more on even terms uh, than they would do in other cases. Certainly in engineering, this has always been a, a problem. Uh, there are not enough girls uh, taking up uh, you know, uh, engineering uh, uh, education at the higher levels. Uh, so this is good. And even more uh, so, you would be surprised and very happy to note, I'm sure, that you know, if you look at the toppers in our courses, 70% of the toppers are women. So a lesser fraction here but they are actually 70% who are topping the courses. So that's really something that we are, which I think I also translate to real life, I think, uh, you know, activity with respect to uh, educational processes, uh, because I think, especially since they are deprived so much, uh, they value the opportunity much more. I think that's psychologically the way I see it. And so when they get the opportunity, they really do well. They do well and they, it shows in the results that uh, we tend to see. Okay. Uh, with respect to the audience registering for the examination, if you look at the percentage of faculty, it's actually been climbing up. There are almost 20% of our, uh, you know, the number of people who are registering for the examination. Uh, nearly, you know, 100,000 student people register for the examination. 70, I mean, 20% of that are faculty. Uh, so, in fact, in the uh, uh, recent run, we had 12,000 plus faculty. More than 12,000 faculty from various institutions take this. And uh, in this context, ju just what I was mentioning a little while earlier, we are actively looking to uh, build on this to create a faculty development program. And uh, again, AICTs, uh, just the way they had given, you know, uh, gazette notifications for credit transfer, they are also actively looking at ways in which they can, you know, uh, give you a, a proper uh, a framework within which you can officially take this as part of a uh, faculty development program. So I think that is still, in the, that is coming up. We are actively working on documentation with respect to that. And uh, I expect that sometime soon you will hear uh, something in this context. And uh, uh, so we are actually doing many various things with it. We also have a teaching learning center. Here in IIT Bombay, there's a lot of uh, effort on, you know, how to do this uh, learning process, how to involve uh, students in the learning process better. So aspects of that will also get involved with the uh, actual content that we are delivering. So it will be, a, uh, it may be a more, uh, you know, enhanced version of the course that the faculty would take and that would constitute like a faculty development program. So that's something that, uh, that is being worked on. Yeah, so this uh, percentage is also high on the 12 week courses, which is which is what something I was pointing out a little bit earlier, because that's a full semester course and that's the typical kind of course that we would also deliver as faculty in our respective institutes. So that's something that uh, we see in our... Okay, so just to share some numbers with you, this is the distribution of highest marks in 514 courses. So, uh, I mean, it, may, it may, may not immediately seem very intuitive, but I'll just run you through what is happening here. This is the number of courses and the, uh, the highest score uh, uh, in that, uh, the number of people with the highest score uh, in that, uh, yeah. So uh, if you, yeah, correct, correct, sorry. This is the number of courses, sorry, this is inverted. The, on your y-axis is the number of courses and the uh, x-axis is actually the highest score in that uh, course. So uh, when we initially started out, we didn't really have uh, proper guidelines or uh, we were also learning. So the few faculty who are our, who were our initial you know offering uh, faculty uh, did what they felt was appropriate and many times they were gauging it against uh, uh, their own you know IIT student audience where they had some expectations on what the student will do what the, how the student will do etc and uh, so we did have a few courses where possibly there was a mismatch in the expectation of what was being expected uh, from the student what the student was expecting from the course etc so we had a, initially a few courses, if you see this, uh, say about uh, seven courses spread across the initial set of courses, uh, more towards the initial set of courses, where actually the highest score was only in the range of, you know, anywhere from zero to 40 marks. That's the highest score in that, of all the students in that course. So that was actually not very encouraging. I mean, it was just, that, that meant there was some mismatch. It was there was some mismatch in the expectation and how it was uh, being delivered. Gradually, we have evolved some criteria on how the assignment should be set up, at what level and what is the level of engagement that should be there, how the assignment should relate to the final examination, things like that. We have come up with some criteria. So you can see here progressively you have courses with larger number of uh, students who are uh, in the 50 to 100 range. So 50 to 100, you will see number of courses where uh, the uh, number of students are in that range. This may seem like a, a large number of uh, you know, uh, students 
uh, large number of uh, uh, number of courses where this uh, this is there, but that is against you know uh, uh, this is only the number of uh, courses uh, number of students uh, because there are some courses with large numbers of students also, and plus our courses are totally now about four, uh, 514. So therefore, naturally you will have a few courses where uh, the uh, number of students who are the topmost scoring student in that course is between 90 and 100. So this uh, this has become more the trend now. So tougher courses would fall in this range and uh, based on the student perception of uh, what it is. But increasingly you will find you know, more popular courses where th there is a more you know, uh, steady uh, I mean, uh, involvement of the assignments in the final examination, etc. A properly planned course you will see somewhere in this range. Uh, more, more and more courses somewhere in, in this range for the toppers. And if you see the distribution of the number of toppers across uh, these courses, so uh, if you see uh, the reason you will see some variation here is uh, the number of toppers is decided on various criteria. So one major criteria is the percentage. So if you look at the uh, courses which have large number of students, okay, so therefore you will have a number of toppers, uh, you will have some uh, courses where the, uh, let me just make sure I understand, number of uh, courses here, yeah this is correct, okay. Number of courses, this is uh, 338 courses where there were between 0 and 10 toppers. Okay, so 338 courses, 0 and 10 toppers, 100 courses between 11 and 20 toppers, 24 courses where uh, you have uh, 21 to 30 toppers, but you do have some courses where you have, you know, 100, 200 toppers. That is because the course itself is large, that course had like 2,000, 3,000 students registering for, maybe even 5,000 students registering for the final examination. So therefore, this is not a number that is, uh, you know, it's not like, you know, it was an easy course, there were, you know, 200 people got a full marks or whatever, it's not like that. It's 200 out of some 2,000 or 2,500 or 3,000 and there are only, only two such courses which, uh, which will fall in that category. And you will see here, so we also have some information here, uh, you can see that that is true. These are courses where there are more than 100 toppers, so that is you are looking at courses from here, this 101 to 200. So this is uh, 9 plus 5, 14 courses which fall in this category, they are, those are courses of this nature, soft skills, uh, introduction to uh, inter internet of things, programming data structures and algorithms using Python, so the, the, these are all very popular courses. So several thousand students enroll for these courses. Therefore, naturally you have, you know, well over 100 toppers in that course. So we'd like to take a moment to acknowledge uh, to, for all these numbers that you saw here, uh, number of people have been involved in this process, uh, much as we present it as NPTEL, we, uh, I mean, facilitate or uh, uh, felicitate, uh, sorry, facilitate it is uh, MHRD, which is the funding agency. They have, they have been really supportive of the whole process. They, they have appreciated the effort that we have all put in and they have really been supportive and tried to encourage us to do more. So the funding is directly from them. It is that funding that makes it possible to do this entire activity free. That is the main uh, part here. Google has also been ex extremely supportive. They have all our, uh, you know, we, our lectures are 40, 40 minutes to 50 minutes. Uh, and uh, you can see, you know, we have put up 37,000 hours of content. All of that content is available on YouTube free of advertisement and they have done this as part of their service for education. I mean, whatever they feel is the, uh, their involvement in this process. There are specific engineers here, uh, Ashwini, uh, Abhinav, uh, Kandelwal, Tej, Rishav and Divi who have uh, been involved uh, which Google, I mean, these are people that Google has uh, designated to work with us. Uh, they work extensively with us. Uh, Ashwini is in fact, uh, their head of uh, in international university relations. Uh, so he spends a lot of time uh, on directly working with us. We, every week we have a call with him for a specific features that we are uh, trying to incorporate, etc. Arisent is a company that has uh, helped us significantly using CSR funding. So as you are aware, uh, many times we are giving 50% you know, off on the uh, fees, the exam fees that is made possible only through CSR funding because the exam fee is not being covered through the MHRD funding. So that is why we are even charging a fee because the, the, the funding covers the course run, it does not really cover the examination. So examination is being done independently and that is how uh, that is being done. TCS Ion is our exam uh, partner. We are actually looking by the way at more companies, we are trying to contact more companies for CSR funding uh, because it does not make sense to just depend on one company for this. TCS Ion is our, has been our exam partner. Of course this is through a proper commercial you know, uh, tender process, they were the ones uh, who qualified. They are the same exam partner that is used by the gate examination. So uh, that is how uh, it is, I mean, uh, that is not the reason why they are our exam partner, but that is also one of their uh, strengths. Uh, and they make it possible for us to have exams all over the country in a coordinated way. So that is their strength and we simply, you know, uh, not everything we can do, so we depend on them to get this done. We have many other uh, uh, agencies, MathWorks, uh, for example, it uh, enables uh, us to have courses in, uh, which are based on MATLAB. 
Uh, MATLAB is very useful for many of our students to learn because that helps them in various uh, aspects of, you know, even they can show this as a skill that they have learned which they can use in the industry. So uh, MathWorks in fact enables us to give free licenses to the students for the duration of the course. So they can, they, everybody does not have to buy MATLAB. They come to our, uh, uh, you know, they register for the course which requires MATLAB and through our portal we can access MATLAB uh, uh, for free for the duration of the course. So they give student licenses for the duration of the course. So that NASCOM, ICMR, a lot of people have uh, collaborated with us courses. We are looking at other agencies also will, who will, many of the uh, you know, professional software development, I mean uh, software that is there, uh, say for example LabVIEW, uh, AutoCAD, etc. Many of them have interest in this because they are happy to see students learn their uh, software with, because ex they are with the expectation that they may use it professionally later on. So, uh, we'll now move to local chapters. I'll just do a few slides and then I think uh, Bharti will take over. So, this is our state-wise distribution of local chapters. We have now over, uh, in fact, over, yeah, over 1,300 uh, local chapters spread across all the states. It has not been uniformly distributed across the states largely due to, uh, you know, uh, it requires us to physically go there, run uh, workshops. We find the number of local chapters that come, that uh, uh, grow up in a particular region is directly linked to the number of workshops we do in those regions. And uh, so we have to take the time to do it. Uh, so we have been doing that steadily. One major contribution from the local chapters is what you see in the slide. And for which again, I thank each of you personally for it. Uh, you can see here starting from say September 2015 when we got into this local chapter initiative aspect, uh, the percentages of the people registered uh, for the exam uh, has actually been climbing up from the local chapters. So based on the total registration initially we had only 32 percent or 20 to 30 percent coming from the local chapter, rest of it was general public. But you can see here as we come to September, October, uh, this immediate preceding run, 70 percent of the registration has been directly from the local chapters. So this is a major accomplishment because this directly shows that uh, the, uh, this also goes up, uh, is in line with, you know, the, uh, when we said who, what motivated you to take this course, almost, you know, 30, 40 percent of the students said that their college encouraged them to take that course. Uh, this shows a good, you know, acceptance of the whole process uh, in, through the colleges, through this, for the students, etc. And this is directly related to local chapter initiative. So we greatly value all the uh, you know, efforts that you put in in your colleges. Uh, and we are hoping to get you know, more support and assistance from you as we go forward. This is our distribution of uh, local chapters across uh, various states. Uh, we still have you know, places where we have to go and do some work. We have not uh, done that. Uh, we are in the process of building, uh, building on uh, this. So from all the other states, only about 9 percent is uh, the enrollment. Uh, uh, exam registration. So we are working on that. We'll uh, try to build uh, the number of local chapters. The highest number of local chapters ever from uh, After Tamil Nadu, right? No. Even. So by the way, so Maharashtra is the largest number of local chapters. There you go. So there you go. So rating and recognition, I'll, you want to start? Okay, I'll start. So we, uh, I mean, since we have come a long distance in this process and so much has happened and so many activities have been started. Um, we felt it was fair to do rating and recognition of uh, all the people who have put in a lot of effort into this process to uh, uh, do this and then uh, you know recognize them for all their efforts that they have put in. So we also wanted to put in some process based on which we would do this because you know 1300 colleges are involved. Uh, we have to uh, I mean do something that is uh, clear uh, I mean and it's also something that you know everybody understands that this is how the recognition process happened. <coughs> so. What have we done for, for example, uh, I mean, um, with respect to examinations, uh, based say last uh, semester, we had nearly 100 centers spread across the uh, country uh, in September and October. And we also conducted offline exams in specific locations where we had very few students available uh, using some local support that we could find. For all this exam work, we had, uh, for every center, we have sent one representative from an NPTEL office. So almost 100 representatives from our offices uh, went to various centers to personally make sure that the exam runs well. We fully understand that one of the major aspects of the value that we provide in over and above all the course content is the rigor uh, and you know uh, quality control that we ensure during the examination process. So we do that personally, we go to various uh, exam centers. So that is the uh, starting point for, for us to do all the analysis on uh, what the results are from the various colleges. So for the students, for example, we have the, as you, as you are aware, uh, the, in their final score, 25 percent of weightage comes from the assignments and 75 percent of the weightage comes from the certification. So we wanted to ensure there is rigor at every stage. 
At the same time, there is good learning opportunity at every stage. So this tries to balance those. So we understand that, for example, the assignment is online. So the students can take the help of their friends or their you know, teachers or their you know, relatives, etc., to do the assignment, which is fine. As long as they're learning in the process, it is absolutely fine. We see nothing wrong with it. So uh, we give 25% weightage for the assignment. Even there, we understand that you know it's a semester-long process. Uh, students may not, for various reasons, they may you know, uh, lose concentration at some point. So we are not even insisting on all their assignments. So we take 75% of the assignments. So best 3 out of 4, best 6 out of 8, or best 8 out of 12, based on the duration of the course, is the number of assignments taken to arrive at the 25% figure. And we do this automatically. We just look at whatever the student does, take the best uh, you know, 6 uh, out of 8, etc., and come at this, uh, arrive at this 25% uh, value. 75% of the weightage is from the final exam. So this is a proctored exam. So they come to the center, they show an ID card, they, sh they have a hall ticket, etc. They sit there and they complete the examination process. So 75% of the weightage is from there. Even in that 75% weightage, as I said, you know, we have worked with our faculty to find ways to make the exam uh, more uh, realistic and more, uh, you know, uh, representative of the course. So our, our faculty have uh, some guidelines on, you know, what percentage of questions should be very similar to that of, uh, say, the assignment questions, so that when the students take it, if they have actually done the assignments well, if they have actually focused, looked at the content, done the assignments well, there's a good chance that they will clear the course. So there's a good chance that, and, and it really means something also. It means that they did learn something, which is what, which is the basic thing that we're interested in looking at. This is not an entrance examination. We're not trying to eliminate anybody. We want to ensure that the student learns something. We want to recognize when the student has learned it. That's it. Those are the only two things we're trying to do. So this captures that 75% uh, weightage and this 25% weightage. And the student has to get at least 40% put together, the 75 plus 25 should be at least more than 40% in order to get a certificate. So the student gets between 40 and 59 overall out of the 100, they get a certificate saying successfully completed. Between 60 and 89, they get an elite, uh, elite tag, and then if it's over 90, they get an uh, elite plus gold medal tag. So this is how it is for all courses. So based on what they get, so they will get this kind of uh, certificate, some gradation in the certificates based on how they have learned it and how they have performed. Then we have a logic based on which we also put a topper uh, indication on the certificate. We'll say the so-and-so topped the course. So for that, we have, uh, again, we understand that, you know, the number of students involved may vary between courses in a very uh, significant way. So if there's a course, we have had very few courses where the number of students is less than 10. But in the event that it is less than 10, only 1% in the course is considered as the topper. Topmost person, the highest mark is the topper. If it is between 10 and 50, the top two students in that course are referred to as toppers. If it is between 50 and 100, top 5 of the course are referred to as toppers. Anything over 100, then it will say a topper, it will say top 1%, top 2%, top 5%. So, so you, the topper thing goes with some, you know, uh, rider, so this is the rider. So, but it still indicates that the person did really well in that course. That's the whole idea of uh, this process. And there's a seal to that effect on the uh, uh, certificate. And it is also, th and these people are also showcased on our portal. On our portal, say toppers in the uh, in various courses. The name will be there, photograph will be there, course will be there, etc. So, for example, uh, this is where, this is where the photograph would be. This is uh, the gold medal that they would get. I think this separate logo here, right, for the topper. This here, this is where the to logo for the topper would come. The student's name, which course they uh, uh, participated in, what is their score in the assignment, what is the score in the proctored exam, what is their total score. And then if they were a topper, you would get a seal here, additional seal that they are a topper and, and, and a particular kind of medal uh, indication there. Now, previously we used to have a URL. Uh, I mean, even now we have it, but you, you don't even need a URL now to, uh, I mean, you don't have to type anything. We have now included a QR code on our certificates. So you simply have to put your mobile phone on it and it will recognize and then take you directly to the site where you can uh, recognize the, uh, I mean, validate the certificate. So this uh, process we have uh, now incorporated. So I think I'll stop with this slide and ask Bharti to take over. These are some of our toppers where, uh, I mean, uh, where we have, you know, gone through this exact process that I just described and identified these toppers. You can see that these are toppers who are, uh, you know, of, in various uh, you know, stages of their career. Some are students, some are faculty, and some are industry people. Uh, so I'll halt here. I'll ask uh, Bharti to take over. Yeah, just uh, one announcement. Uh, we have two camera people here. A recent is somebody who has been supporting us in the last three years with uh, fee waivers as you know. So we've gotten more than three crores from them uh, towards fee waivers and we have disbursed more than uh, fee waivers to more than 55,000 students as on date.
So something that we would like to give back to them is a feedback at least saying that how have these fee waivers uh, helped our students, which has to primarily come because we give these fee waivers to the local chapter colleges. So if any of your colleges have actually utilized the fee waivers, if you all can give us some specific video feedback, talk on the camera, uh, you know, that we could pass on to Arison, it would be really helpful because that gives them that they can take it internally whenever a proposal goes to them saying give us more funds or where it is being utilized, we'd really appreciate it. So you can do it either now or after the session, but we would definitely urge you to give some video feedback for us about the Arison.